something that happens to be above it, but you can see down deep into it and you can see perfectly clearly, even at the bottom of a lake, if it's perfectly still, you can see everything. So that only happens when it is perfectly calm. But once you start getting the least bit of turbulence, which is, of course, your emotions coming into operation, then everything starts getting cloudier. It no longer reflects accurately what is above it, and you can no longer see down into it. And at some point, it's nothing but pure turbulence, and you can see nothing at all. So if you're hoping to see clearly in life, that happens when your emotions are perfectly, perfectly calm. That's the only time you can really see clearly is when you get the <laughs> emotions perfectly stable. By the way, you will never ever completely get away from emotions as long as you're in a physical body. So don't, don't try to think you that you're going to completely eliminate them, but at least recognize them and start working on controlling them. So when somebody cuts you off drive, mm -hmm. just bless them and let them go. Bless them. <laughs> <laughs> or, as, uh, or as Paul likes to do, oh, yeah. because uh, this is all, you know, always a good good practice when you're driving. Uh, you'll, you'll run into no end of uh, tests when you're driving. He says, how long can I stay mad at that person? And then he starts laughing, and that's right. the end of it. Oh, that's a great Time point. yourself. See how long you're willing to stay angry. Because when you're angry, you're actually you're hurting yourself. Yeah. So how long am I willing to stay angry? And then just by nature of saying that, you automatically. Yeah. I time myself. I time myself to see how long it takes before I get angry. Uh -huh. And the next driver or whomever you know, coming across my path. And then I say, you know, let me just bless them and move on. Away from, give them a wide berth because sometimes they need it. Yeah, exactly. But, and uh, and that's the other point is we never know what they're dealing with. Exactly. You know, they may be elderly, they may be unaware, they may have some kind of medical issue. We don't know what they're dealing with. So they may have a gun. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> <There we go. laughs> So we have five minutes, six minutes left, and let's finish up at least the astral okay. body. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll have many more. <laughs> so a couple more points that we want to just wrap up with on the astral body. This is the plane of existence where where mediumship occurs, and it's important to understand why. We we opened up the conversation on the astral world as everything being kind of star-like and all these koshas or planes of existence are illusory in nature but this one specifically specifically this is the, the the arena where attractions happen and where we see things that might appear to be something that they're actually not so think of a seance for example uh what are we trying to con or not we what are they trying to contact or do during a seance someone who's passed on right well, knowing what we know, are we able to contact the consciousness of someone who's died? Do you think that person is just hanging out there waiting to be communicated with? This is controversial, but it's important to bring this up because this is the astral world. What was that, Steve? Carnate at that point, and their soul wouldn't be there to do that? If someone has passed on, they are... trying to go to another level, maybe down or up, but if they're doing that, is their soul still there, or did it reincarnate just? something some other form at that point. That's a very good point. Um, we actually will have a chapter where we will speak more in depth about the process of, of death and what happens after death. But let me just point out that it is not dissimilar from when the person is asleep. How much meaningful conversation can you have with a person who is asleep? That's about that's really about as much as you can expect. Uh, here's what happens. There are two uh, important phases of life after death. One is where all of the accumulated emotions have to be resolved. So the person who has resolved all 
of their emotional baggage before they pass on, that period is very short, sometimes a matter of hours. But in most people, it's a number of years for that emotional energy to work itself out. Then there's a period of unconsciousness. Uh, and then later, if the person was a very kind individual, or even to some extent, they will have a period of what is called Devachan, which is a very spiritual and very blissful period of existence. And that has everything to do with what you created at the buddhic level of your awareness. Compassion, uh, kindness, uh, just, just general goodwill that you have, uh, good acts that you have done. So um, getting back to your question, there, I studied uh, spiritual, uh, you know, spiritualism for about seven years, and I honestly did not find anything of value in it. So my point is that when people contact or think they contact other people, what they're contacting is the residual energy of that person. And it is kind of like a recording almost. It's so, the remnants of the vibrations or their aura that was created. We talked earlier about how the aura is a, an accumulation, a cumulative field of your vibrations. And that's what remains and slowly dissipates after the lower quaternary dies. And that's what's being contacted. The information that's received from mediums is almost never very specific and very detailed. It's usually general and vague because the consciousness of that person is not really there at that level. It's not in the astral emotional. And we'll talk about the, uh, the layer, the levels of the consciousness after death in the next chapter, which is what the next chapter is all about. But the actual consciousness is not there. It's just the remnants of the vibrations that that person perpetuated. So, so the person's moved on, but their emotional energy is still like floating back. Yes, and exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So when the medium says uh, your, your grandmother wants you to know that she's fine and that she loves you, well, that's all from, from when she was alive. That's the energy that when she was alive, she was fine and she's still fine and, and she still loves you. Cigar, that gets <laughs> Yeah, it's the aura, it's the vibrational quality. Yeah, so for example, exactly. when we ding the bell, there is an action that's taking place, but then there's the vibrational quality that remains and it slowly dissipates. Same thing with our thought forms that we create throughout 90 years of our life. The thought forms and emotional vibrations are created and they slowly, slowly dissipate. A um, couple of quick points. You can only create karma when you are conscious in a physical body and you can only have meaningful existence during that time. That's why this lifetime is so important. You're creating karma every moment of your waking life, whether it's positive or whether it's negative karma, it depends on the quality of what you're doing. And it includes thoughts, emotions, and physical actions. So the causal body is, like we said, the repository of all of that energy that has been accumulated. The period between the incarnations is the period to sort out some part, portion of that energy and get ready for the next uh, phase of active uh, awareness and, act, and active life. So I said the causal body only takes in the good stuff and kind of lets go of the bad stuff. And it, it, has, it collects all of it, but at its own level of, a, of awareness, it is pure bliss and pure high consciousness. That's the only thing it can express. However, some portion of it collects all of it. It's 401. Uh-oh, time to say goodbye. <laughs>
All right. Thank you to all of our online joiners. Okay. And thank you for all of you. Okay. Maybe we can pick this up next time. Well, I would love to. Be... Two weeks from today will be our next one. Yeah. So next next Sunday is Mother's Day. Remember your mother on Mother's Day. <laughs> and uh, then the following Sunday. Oh. Thank and you on Thursday, Paul and I are going to meet with the ladies in Siena. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, there's a group uh, of ladies who live in, in Siena.